Acrylics are not only an extremely versatile medium, but they are also very easy to handle for both abstract and representative motifs. And in today's video, I would like to introduce you to special brushes that, especially in combination with acrylics, create beautiful structures and exciting mixtures that give your paintings a vibrating look. Hello and welcome back to Art for Everybody. For those who don't know me, my name is Evie Steiner Böhm. I'm an artist from Germany and I also have two little assistants who are called Pedro and Rosa and they sometimes help me in my videos to explain things so that they are easier to understand. And now I'm going to paint a little flower still life for you using these special brushes. So let me show you the material first we are going to use. Um, these are these rubber brushes, or as they are also called color shapers, that I'm going to use. If you do not have them, you could of course try to do the same thing with palette knives, but you will see that these are completely different uh, concerning brush strokes. The colors I'm going to use are titanium white, cadmium yellow lemon, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, crimson, ultramarine blue, Parisian blue, and burnt sienna. And I'm going to paint on a dark surface. This is just, let me show you, this is just gray carton, which I have covered with a dark acrylic paint. And I will explain in a minute why I use a dark surface. And these are the flowers we are going to paint. And I would like to demonstrate you how to paint them on this small sample here, so that it will be easier for you to understand what I will be doing in the painting. Now, let me show you how I work with these brushes, because I simply use them like I would use normal brushes. The color covers the surface very irregularly and I have automatically different shades of white if I paint with these brushes. Now this was the broad one. You also have a sharp one with which you can draw lines. But also the lines get very irregular it looks very abstract. Or you could use this one for making dots. My favorite for painting flowers or small motifs is this one. Because that's the easiest for me to handle. And the good thing about them is that if you want to clean them, you simply take your kitchen towel and you wipe the color off and then you're done. Now, the reason why I'm using a dark surface for uh, this technique is that as you can see, if you put on the first layer of color, you still see the dark surface shimmer through, which means that this area stays darker and if I want a lighter part, I have to put on more layers of lighter color. And then you automatically have the effect that the thicker part is the lighter part, and this is nearer to you. And if you turn the painting, you will see that the light is reflected differently in the darker and in the lighter parts. And this is a trick the old masters used. They always have uh, thick layers of color in the lighter side of their motif, and the layers in the darker side are thinner.
So now let's have a look at our flowers and see how we can paint them. We're going to start with this yellow one and I will mix a sort of warm yellow with my cadmium yellow and cadmium red. And as you can see, cadmium yellow is a very transparent color with acrylics, so this won't work. So what we have to do if we want yellow flowers or white flowers, we have to cover the space of the flower with white first and then paint with yellow over it. So what working with these kind of brushes or shapers does with you is that it forces you to stay sort of abstract because you cannot, you know, paint every detail or mix every nuance of your color with it. You simply have to do the simple forms. And this is how I personally discovered these shapers. When I was a beginner, I always tried to paint things very thoroughly, every detail, every color nuance. And as you can imagine, as a beginner, I didn't succeed. So I got really frustrated until in a class, one of my neighbors said, oh my God, you have to loosen up. Come on, use my color shaper and try to paint with that. And then you will know how to abstract things. So I tried that and I was really, really pleased because I didn't have to worry about mixing so much or about the details. And I painted with these color shapers for quite a while after that. I'm going to show you some of the paintings from back then. They are more than 20 years old but I think they are still very nice. I have to wait quite a while till this layer is dry. So I'm going to do one of the other flowers first. And I'm going to try the blue one. I'm going to mix ultramarine blue and crimson with a little white. And since I have to add white anyway, to get this uh, sort of violet, I don't have to put a lighter layer under my, under my blue flower. So I hope you can see that with this brush, I don't have to worry about mixing, but if you go with paint into the still moist paint, it mixes in a very irregular way and you have lots and lots of different shades of violet without doing anything. So let's try our yellow flower now. I do the same as before. I mix a warm yellow. And again, as you see, I don't have to mix because the color sort of mixes itself. And we have a beautiful abstract flower here without doing anything. Now, let me lift that a little up to the camera so that you can see, can you see the beautiful structures here? Now, if we want to paint these little white flowers here, we do the same as with the yellow flower. We cover the space with white first. And we stay very abstract. And if we want to add lights to our flowers, we simply wait till the paint is dry and then go over some of the petals and make them even whiter. But I think we could leave it like that anyway. And the last flower I would like to show you is this one. 
And I'm going to use th this sharp color shaper for it and make sort of dots with a sort of greenish, brownish color and also stay very abstract. And again, it seems as if the dark surface and the irregular spots of the paint sort of mix colors by themselves without you doing anything. Okay. And now I'm going to let you watch how I paint this little flower still life. You've seen most of the techniques now. And the only thing I have not showed you yet is for the background, I'm going to use a palette knife and I'm going to do big strokes and then use the color shaper to make different nuances of the background color. That's all there is to it. I've already done the sketch for my little still life and the first thing I do now is what I just showed you. I will cover these spaces where the yellow flowers go with white and then paint the rest and the background. And only in the end, when the white color is dry, I put yellow color over it. So my little flower still life is finished and I think you can see it's very abstract but I will lift it up to you now to the camera. I hope you can see that within the flowers you have many many different colors from almost white to yellow to very dark to sort of greenish and without me even mixing colors. And if I turn it a little now, you may also see that you have a lot of structure in it. And this structure, of course, makes the whole painting sort of glitter. And I think that's a very nice effect. And with this, I'm going to leave it like that. I hope, as always, you enjoyed watching and you will join in for the next video. And until then, have a very good time. See you soon.